League of Legends is a team-based game. Riot has made very sure of that through tweaking the game and balancing it in such a way that you need five players playing together as a team to win the game. But over the course of the game's history, one lane has always been at the center of League of Legends' explosive growth. It's the one in the center, the mid lane. That's not to say that mid is the most important position in League. Like I said, Riot has balanced it in such a way that they're all equally important. But somehow, the growth of mid has always tied directly into the growth of League of Legends. Have you ever wondered why so many teams have superstar mid laners? Why the players often credited with pushing the game forward historically played mid? It's because mid has so often been the place where the best of the best pop off. Hey, before we get into it, if you want a sweet The Score Esports branded shirt just like this, or any of our other pieces of merch, you can check out our store. You'll find a link in the comments below. I think Pekka's had something to prove against everybody. Pekka's a player that always shows up when the pressure hits. He is probably the most popular European player, and has been for a very long time. So, here's a fun fact. If you didn't start watching League of Legends until 2015, like me, you probably didn't know that in the earliest days of the game, there wasn't really a mid laner, per se. In the earliest days of the game, pre-season 1 even, there were differing opinions on what kinds of champions should be played in which lane. And oh, there's a little bit of a uh, stand as well for Misfortune, but uh, this is really going to be a, a farm lane for now. Oh no, Misfortune getting a little bit unsafe, takes uh, about 112 damage now on her, and hits another wild card. So Misfortune's getting harassed super hard by TF, and she's actually misplaying this lane because of that. Prevailing opinion early on was that teams should send their ranged AD carries, the characters who needed the most farm, to the mid lane, which was the shortest lane and thus the easiest to get farm in, just like in Dota. Of course, they didn't realize that mid is also the most gankable lane in the league, thanks to the bushes on either side. So the AD carry was sent bot to be maybe sat by support who would keep them alive while they farmed. There was also a growing understanding of macro in the League of Legends community. As people got to understand the game, they realized that the mid outer turret was extremely important, since it unlocked both sides of your opponent's jungle, unlike the one side offered by the side lanes. They're getting this mid turret right here. Uh, and unfortunately, Tristana did die, but and yes, that turret is gone now. So that is one and two turret kills for Epic, but only one kill for CLG. And oh man, they're going to pick up some more key objectives. Staying alive and defending mid started to become incredibly important. And so we started seeing mages go mid. Most mages offered either mobility or crowd control to help escape ganks and burst damage to help them capitalize on ganks themselves. By the time Season 1 Worlds rolled around, we pretty much had the standard lane set up, with a tank or bruiser top, mage mid, AD carry and support bot, and a jungler in between. Taking a lot of turret shots, Lemmy is <laughs> dodging. Thankfully those slows will not die. Oh, Mama gets blown up right there. Wow, that damage output was strong from Juche and Lemmy is In Europe, which eventually became known for pumping out some of the best mid laners in the world, we had Froggen, Alex Each, Ocelot, and Xpeke. In NA, TSM always played around Reginald, and at Season 2 Worlds, the Taipei Assassins took first place, thanks in part to Toys and his incredible Oriana play. They're gonna fight the Oriana, and Ultimate pops across, Toys drops straight down before he has chance to react to that one. He gets a second, Song's gonna get dropped as well. Ghost, you can lock them down in the turret, Stanley gets out of that, and it's just huge pressure from Taipei Assassins right now. He, it's now 3-3, three to three, or 4-3 to three now, finally, the last auto attack and double kill for Toys, the ace oh, on the map. Oh, he's away, Shockwave, he's looking at double ball, oh. Shockwave's gonna, that's gonna be an oracle burn for Toys, beautiful, beautiful play by Toys, that's a single handedly take down Cloud Templar. But by Season 3, there was a shift in the kind of champions we saw played mid. Mages were already popular, but Assassins began to take over the meta. Assassins were the source of some of the flashiest, most incredible plays in Season 3, and their strength in the mid lane meant that you needed a strong, mechanically talented mid laner to take advantage of their power. <laughs> That change was happening at the same time that League of Legends was undergoing explosive growth. 
Leagues were popping up all over the world, with the NA and EU LCS in the West and the LPL in China, while OG and Champions continue to showcase high-level gameplay from Korea. And of course, fans got to see incredible mid laners tearing it up on high-risk, high-reward mechanical champions like Ari. Defensively waiting back. Oh, I think Nuke they'll try to bait that one, but it may well turn back around on him. Is he going to have enough coming out from that life steal? No, he's not. Faker pops that DMG, just pulls the trigger. LeBlanc. From the side, Zyra gets the knock on one to two. Links the dead man. Here comes the rest of the team as Lemon Nation gets destroyed as well. Meteos has gone out behind them, but he won't stand for long. That three for nothing. Oh, four for nothing. Uh -oh. I think he's not getting away. And of course, Zed. Oh, look at the cleanse. Look at the moves. Faker, what was that? Faker with a huge what? play, the QSS. I can't believe I just saw that. He actually won that duel. I can't yes, believe that happened. Telecom. From 2013 to 2014, Assassins ruled the League of Legends meta. Sure, there were other viable picks, but the best players were playing Assassins and styling on their opponents, which meant that some of the very best teams in the world were playing around a skillful mid laner. Gameplay-wise, he's very strong. He also does shout calling. Uh, he also plays a lot of champions, and he's very aggressive in lane, similar to Reggie's style. Mid lane is definitely about having a lot of pressure, which is also why a lot of teams choose to gank mid a lot. Usually they'll ask for ganks a lot. I have to do it or else they take my race. You definitely need to have a good relationship with your jungler. I'm basically stuck doing everything he wants. It also meant that the very best mid laners in the world were pushing the limits of what people thought was possible in the game. Finishes Trinity Force, got his gun, oh, and his Hydro Brutalizer. It's all about finding fights. Deathmark going down, but is it going to be enough? Sunday is going to be a. Oh! Oh! Beckett, oh, the ignite! Not enough to finish off either. The burst, just enough to get Peke the kill and survive. What a pure outplay from Peke. We have to see that one again in slow mo. They were advancing the meta with incredible plays, which made them into some of the game's most famous players. 어 사실 제가 지난번에 좀 유우 선수랑 제드 1대1을 하는 여, 영상이 많이 올라와서 어, 그 점으로 인해서 많이 언급이 되고 있는데. 이런 덤덤한 성격에도 첫 팬미팅을 했을 때는 정말 놀랐어요. 남녀노소 다양한 분들이 길게 줄을 서서 기다리고 계시더라고요. Guys like Bjergsen. That's the death mark of the Kratos. So Bjergsen's gonna try and get it. He finishes it. Picks up a double kill. Ferrello gets it. It's a triple kill. Arane is gonna get taken down. Bjergsen gets a quadra. Dade. Dade coming in. The solar flare. So sad. Dade. Dade gets the ultimate though. Oh, he doesn't kill him. No, he does kill him. And now Dade fighting with Mata. He's gonna get another one to kill. And Baker. Uh, a relatively weak. Player. Whoa, whoa, ambition. What? Baker just executes ambition in that mid lane. As the years have gone on, though, the mid lane has gotten a little less flashy. Assassins are still playable, but like any role, their power fluctuates depending on the meta. Mid has settled down. And just as the meta changes, you can't really do that as well because champions go away. They're just not champions that were as viable anymore. Backline may just become important, like Orianna, wave clear ones that aren't necessarily my forte. So it's just like the meta started shifting away from me on top of not me after the injury and it just kind of like snowballed into like going worse from there. It's still an important spot on the map, given that the whole game literally revolves around the mid lane, but it's not the place where everything happens the way it was just a few years ago. Even so, we're still seeing a new era of exciting mid lane talent emerge. Uh, I've already made the statement before uh, that I think he's, the, he's basically the most mechanically gifted player we have ever sent uh, out of Europe. Uh, he can do everything in game when it comes to executing any kind of champion, any kind of matchup, any kind of setup. Not all teams are exclusively playing around mid, but when it came time for G2 to rebuild their roster, they only kept their star mid laner, Perks, and built the team around him. Defensive flash from Uzi, teleport's coming down. Comes they Perks. Not just to find out. Perks, boos! Stop RNG! Much from that, now way ahead of Xiaohu. Being a favorite in this tournament is get more. Xiaohu may get solo killed. No way, killed. no Big way. He's ticking down. One more! He gets him! Perks gets the solo kill. This is his team! Europe's other top team has often played around their stalwart AD carry reckless, but they've recently seen success when they play around their young rising star in the middle lane. Huge! 
Over in China, Invictus Gaming's mid laner Rookie has been a powerhouse for much of his career, but this year, he's come into his own as the de facto strongest mid laner in the world. Uzi now in trouble, did have to flash away. Rookie oh! Away. The flash bubble hits over the wall, he finds Rookie! The ignite burning down and Uzi Got dies! I cannot believe Rookie hit that! while KT Rolster's 17-year-old rookie Yukao helped the team earn a first-place playoff finish for the first time since the summer of 2014. Anchovy, turn this one around, it looks like oh! yes is the answer! Gigantic Wombo, but no, it's going back for KT! Instant triple kill as Yukao says, welcome to my river! A new era of the mid lane is dawning, and hopefully, as that new talent grows, League of Legends can grow along with them. This is all about the mid lane matchup. With so many crazy things going on in the meta, you could look in any direction you want. But for me, it's all about caps and perks. These guys are incredible performers. They're two of the strongest mid laners in the European LCS. So we just want to prove ourselves. I feel like EU has been not performing too good at Worlds for a while now. And we want to change that. So this is our Worlds. Thanks for watching. If you want more great content just like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button.